I was writing some things. Before I get into the word portion, I was writing some things. You know, in California, we pastored a church, and we had a, a, a group called the African Fellowship, and there were about 14 different nations um, that represented different nations in Africa. I mean, we had, I don't know, there's probably three or 400 Nigerians alone in our, in our African Fellowship ministry. And one thing I learned is the power when you start a year of making decrees. Amen? Amen? See, a declaration, we declare a word, we're declaring, we're coming into agreement with what God says. But a decree is different. A decree is when we begin to declare something and heaven and God come into agreement with what we're saying in the earth. Somebody hears what I'm saying. I'll give you some examples. In Psalm 81 verse 10, Open your mouth with a mighty decree, and I will fulfill it now. You'll see the words that you speak, so shall it be. Now, it's according to God's will. Also, Job twenty two twenty eight, thou shalt also decree a thing. Somebody say decree. decree. And it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. There's something about making decrees. God says, I will fulfill it now. It's going to take place now. So I want you to repeat some things after me. Are we ready? 2024 is going to be a year of record souls being saved, of backsliders coming home, of loved ones coming to Jesus, of bodies being healed, of creative miracles taking place. Huh. Of quick works all around me. Of open doors where there have been closed ones. Of families being restored. Of marriages coming together. Of yokes being broken. And burdens lifted. Of strongholds destroyed. Of enemies scattering. It is a year of prophetic fulfillment of businesses taking root, and I'm going to bear fruit. I'm going to see spiritual breakthroughs. I'm going to see natural breakthroughs. God is going to enlarge my territory, and I'm going to walk in the favor of the Lord. Now, I can go on and on, but somebody say amen. amen. Sometimes you have to decree a thing, and the Scripture says God will establish it and he will fulfill it. And sometimes we just got to open up our mouth and we need to speak the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen? And the word of the Lord is powerful. Is that right? So let's get into the word of the Lord today. We're going to be starting a brand new series called Encountering Yourself. And we're talking about the year of divine encounters. When you look through scripture, you look at man, you look at women, you look at different individuals, and at certain times and certain seasons, they had divine encounters. Now, can you imagine that all of 2024, you're just going to go off, go, you're going to experience divine encounter after divine encounter after divine encounter. You're going to meet with God. God's going to change things up. He's going to move and he's going to work on your behalf. And so I want to speak a word of faith in this house today. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. How many need a faith boost? Amen. Faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so God wants to speak a word of faith in this house that's going to strengthen you and empower you and put you to a place where you're going to see everything that God has spoken over your life come to pass in this hour. That's what I love about the whole, the whole book of Joshua. When you look in Joshua, it says everything that the Lord has spoken over them, they, they, they began to possess the land. They saw the promises of God just unfolding right before their very eyes. We live in a crazy hour, in a dark time, and even in that time, the light is going to shine bright. Amen? So get your prophetic bony finger out, and I want you to stick it in your neighbor's face. Don't poke them now. And tell them, I... I'm so thankful that God has us where he has us. Somehow, he got us from over there to over here. And over there 
I'm going to tell you the truth. It almost killed me. But God willed me into something that would fulfill me. I don't know how he did it, but I have to admit it that I almost quit it, but it was too legit to quit it. So instead I submitted until I was transmitted into the place God committed for my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we're talking about encountering yourself. What a weird, strange topic to begin a year with. Encountering yourself. It's de la soul, me, myself, and I. But what God wants to do in 2024, he needs to get us into a place where we can maximize everything that he wants to accomplish in this hour so that we can be Everything that he wants us to be in this hour. I'm looking at the church in this time, and it's time for the church to be the church. It's time for God's people to rise up and be God's people. We have to be salt and light in this hour. We have to reach people with the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And so this month is a prophetic reach into your heart where God is calling you forth. And so in this month, he's going to bring healing. He's going to bring restoration. He's going to cause you to not live a different version of who you are, who are you supposed to be. Some of us, we've been living in the aberration of who we're supposed to be because of a lack of revelation of who we are supposed to be. But God wants to bring us into that place where we can say, I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I am a child of God. And I know who my daddy is. My daddy owns the cattle on a thousand hills. My daddy made all of this. He's the maker of heaven and earth. He's the creator of the universe. That's who my daddy is. And when you know who your daddy is, you find out who you are. Now, here's our theme verse for the month. It's Psalm 100, verse 3. I love Psalm 100. It's a powerful psalm. So I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of the words. It's real short, so you're not going to stand long. And then we're going to read a verse from Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. But first, let's read this, because this is our key verse for every session of this time. And by the way, if you stay for the day, the second service is a whole other subject. So you're gonna, if, you, if you can't stay, then make sure you go to YouTube and watch the second service online because every week there's going to be so many different elements that we're going to be laying down. So if you just come to one service, that's fine, but make sure you get all the services in and we're following along with the Word because God's establishing something powerful, amen, in this house. Are you ready to read this Word? Ready? No. Wait, stop right there. Stop right there. No. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3 says, let us follow on to know the Lord. There's something about knowing the Lord. It's in the Hebrew, it's yada, and it speaks of intimacy. It speaks of knowledge. It speaks of when you know, then you can flow and you can grow and you can go forward in your purpose in your life. There's an intimacy, knowing. There's an inside knowledge, an inside scoop. How many want an inside scoop? It's called revelation. There's something about knowing. There's something about understanding. There's something about knowledge that comes from the Lord. It's the knowing place. And we're stepping in 24 in this first week into the knowing place. Well, you're going to find out some things. And the number one thing you need to realize is this statement right here. Ready? Know that the Lord is. He is God. Can somebody say that again? Know that the Lord, He is God. He's the one who sits on the throne. He's over all of this. And the kingdoms of this world are going to become the kingdoms of our God and of His Christ. And He's going to reign forever and ever and ever. Amen. Know that the Lord, He is God. Ready? And here's our key, ver key phrase for the month. It is he who made us, who has made us, and not we ourselves. So here's my statement for today. 
when my perspective is lined up with whose I am, I then have a directive for who I am. All right? It is he, and I'm talking today about God made us. It is he who, ready, made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now let's read our verse for today, Jeremiah chapter 1, and I encourage you to read Jeremiah chapter 1, uh, that, that whole thing, verses 1 through 12, but let's read verses 4 and 5 here today, ready? Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, to who? To me, to Jeremiah. It's personal. There's a personal word, because we're dealing with encountering yourself, that God has for you. Now, there could be a corporate word, but sometimes God wants to get personal. Remember that song back in the day? He's my personal Jesus. I can't even sing, but I'm not trying to. But I'm hearing that song. He's a personal Jesus. Then the word of the Lord, ready, came to me. Point to yourself, me, saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. No, 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 no. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for knowledge. We thank you for understanding. We thank you for your presence. You said you come in the volume of the book. It is written of you. And so, Lord, come, move, breathe, heal, transform. In this day, we pray in Jesus' name. And somebody said, be seated if you can. Be seated if you can. So we're starting this new series, and we're going to encounter God. You see, the, the premise I want to give you is this, because this is a year of divine encounters. When you encounter God, that's when you encounter yourself. John wrote his cover letter for the Gospel of John called First John. We call it an epistle called First John. And he wrote this revelation. He said, when you see him, you will become like him, for you will see him as he is. When you see him, I could just stop right here and forget all this. When you see him, when you get a revelation of who he is, when you encounter him, when you meet with God, Something changes. All of a sudden, you see him and you become like him because you need to realize that you're just going back to your original intention because when God made you, he said to himself, all three of him, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And then John gets the revelation later on and he says, when you see him, you will be like him. You're coming back to who you were created to be, for you shall see him as you is. When you have a God encounter, all of a sudden you also have a self-encounter. Because when you get into his holiness, can I talk to somebody here? When you get into his holiness, he says, be holy as I am holy. When you get into his presence, has anyone ever been in his presence? Guess what? You were in his presence this morning. In that worship set, the Holy Spirit just came in, and we're in his presence. And when you get into his presence, everything changes. And what I've come to the realization is I, can't, I cannot fully recognize or know or appreciate who I am unless I first know who he is. And so there's something that, that's inside of me that says, i got to get into his presence because that's where my identity is. My identity is in him. Now, why am I talking about this? Why are we going to this? Because we need you. And the world needs you. You weren't born just to suck air, live a little, make a little money, and then die. You were created, come on, you were formed. You were ordained by God with a purpose. With a purpose 
to touch people and to bring people to heaven. How many people are going to come up in heaven and thank you for telling them about Jesus? Come on now. And that's why they are there. That's powerful stuff. But we need you. We need you to be healthy, strong, anointed, obedient, excellent, joyful, full of wisdom, nice, kind, really, really flowing in your anointing, your callings, and your giftings, and off the hook in Jesus' name. That's what we need from you. We, don't, we, we, we need you to be whole. We need you to be complete. We need you to be undamaged, unhindered, unencumbered. We need you to step into your purpose in this hour. And the world needs you. People need you. Your family needs you. You are necessary. Can I speak to somebody up in here? You are crucial. You are essential. You are vital. Can I think of any other adjectives and words for who you are? You're not just here just to be a lump on the log, just to sit there and just watch the grass grow and time go by and the world get dark. No, 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 baby. God put a dream in your heart. And he gave you a prophetic destiny to be a freedom voice. I'm preaching now. To be a freedom voice. To be a carrier of the anointing. Here's an assignment for somebody. Read Isaiah 61 this week. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And he's anointed me. And you start going. You're, you're calling out prisoners and people who are bound and bringing them into freedom in Jesus' name. There's something powerful that's resting on your life. And we don't need you to be anybody else. We don't need you to be another version of somebody else. We need you to be you. Because the question when you get to heaven is not going to be, why were you not more like Abraham? Or why were you more not more like Moses? Or why were you more not like more like David? Now the question is going to be why were you not being you? Be you. I got to call you forth. I got to call you prophetically to step into your anointing and your calling in this day. Because the enemy's strategy is to, 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 to cause you to move in like I said an aberration, a modification of who you're supposed to be. There's a story of, 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 of some thieves, and they broke into a jewelry store, and they didn't steal anything. Crazy thieves. They didn't steal anything. What they did instead was they just switched all of the price tags in the jewelry store so that the next morning, the expensive jewelry was sold as junk jewelry, and the junk jewelry was sold as expensive jewelry. And here's the point. We live in a world, I'm talking to somebody here, where someone's trying to rearrange the price tags. But I got an announcement for somebody. You're not junk. You're valuable. And the enemy wants to switch your price tag around and make you feel like you're insignificant. Oh gosh, insignificant. And without worth, but you, every single one of you, are powerful. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Somebody say, I am a child of God. And we live in a culture where value is placed on how you look, what you have, what you can do. It's a Kardashian world. Can I, can I give you a three-point sermon on a Kardashian world? Ready? Are you ready for the three points? No skills. All thrills. And many spills. Huh. But true value is not based on size or bling. We need to, I, I got this right here. We need to use what jewelers use. You, you ever seen a jeweler's loop? A jeweler's loop where they, they look at, a diamond, and when they look at the diamond, a diamond is not judged on its size. See, we got this for nine ninety nine. 
Are you out of your mind? A dime is not judged on its size, but on its clarity. You see, we're in a moment where God wants to give you clarity. Because clarity is the thing that gives you value. And God wants to bring clarity to who you are in Jesus. In Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. All those old things have passed away. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Hasta la vista, baby. I'm moving on to the new thing. Behold, all things have been made new. He makes all things new new in Christ Jesus. And so I got to speak a word of clarity in this house today, clarity about who you are in Christ Jesus. There was a gentleman, his name was Dr. James Michelson, and he was counseling a lady one time, and she came in and she started to tell her story, and she was going on and on and telling her story. It was a terrible story of all the things that she had experienced in her life. And while she was talking he was, in his mind, just kept getting this download of Psalm 100, verse 3. It is he who made us, and not we ourselves. That's our verse today. It is he who made us, and not we. She was talking, and he just kept getting this verse. And so finally, she stopped talking, and she said, what do you think? And he said, well, I feel like God's telling me to give you this verse. It is he who made you. It is he who made us. And not we ourselves. Does that mean anything to you? And the lady said, oh my gosh. She started to cry. She began to sob. And then she composed herself and she said, huh. When you were talking, I remembered that I didn't tell you something. That when I was born, my mom got pregnant with me huh, before she was married. And I always thought that I was an accident. And so I've lived my entire life thinking that I was a mistake. And when you started saying, it is he who made us and not we ourselves, it's like something switched in my mind and in my heart. And I began to see that God was the one who created me. And God was the one who made me. And my perspective changed. And she said, thank you, Dr. Michelson, because... I'm going to live differently from this day forward. What happened? Her perspective changed when she heard the word of the Lord and she realized that she was a creation of God and she was not an accident. You see, somebody, I got an announcement for somebody. You need to realize that you are not an accident, that your life is not a mistake that you're not here by happenstance, by just some cosmic thing that just took place. No, you are in God's hands. And how you got here is not the thing that you need to worry about. You need to real, realize that God has you here, that you are God's idea, and you are God's creation. See, when you encounter yourself, can I talk to somebody? God wants to, what he wants to do is he wants to change your view of yourself. Remember back in the day? Back in the day, we'd, anyone go to the fair? You know the county fair or the state fair? Woo, we went to the state fair a couple years ago in Dallas. We're not going back. That was mayhem. And there was, there was somebody who, there, was, there were people running. There was, we, we, were, we were in there, and, and there was, all of a sudden, they were like, there's a gun, there's a gun, there's a gun. And like 3,000 people like on the stampede running through the state fair. And I'm just like, I grabbed my wife, I grabbed my daughter. We like hid under like a, a corn store where they sell the corn, the little, 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 little area. And we just hid literally behind the, with corn back there. And it was crazy. I was like, we're not going back to the fair again. But back in the day, 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 they used to have a thing called the House of Mirrors. Remember the House of Mirrors? And you go into the House of Mirrors, and you walk into this maze, and there you go, and you walk into this maze, and when you're in this maze, you have these warped perspectives of who you are. And so you might look at one mirror, 
and all of a sudden your eyes are bulging and your ears are popped out. Another mirror, you're overweight. Another, another mirror, you really love it, you're skinny. Another mirror, you're tall. Another mirror, you're short. But they're all based on a warped perspective. You see, God wants us to have a godly perspective. Now, I have a gift for everybody in this room. You know I'm giving gifts this month. And everybody's going to get a mirror. And it's not a warped mirror. This is a mirror of encountering yourself. And so they're handing out these wonderful mirrors, and there's different colors. So, you know, you can pick whatever color you'd like. But in this mirror, it's just all I'm doing is just giving you a little trinket because this is a moment where God wants you to encounter yourself. You know, the book of James refers to a mirror. It says that a man can look in a mirror and walk away and forget what he looks like. But when you look into the mirror of the word, what he calls the perfect law of liberty, all of a sudden it changes you and you move from a place of not just being a hearer of the word, but you become a doer of the word. Let it be said in this house that we're not just hearers of the word, but we're doers of the word. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And so I'm giving you these mirrors as a little gift, a little surprise that you're going to have so that you can just look each in this month because God has made you perfect. Can somebody say that? God has made me perfect. So guess what? You better take care of yourself a little better. God has made you perfect, so maybe you need to spruce yourself up a little better. Go get yourself another outfit or something like that. Get your, get your hair did. Do, do, do something Because God has made you perfect, so take care of this. Eat proper. Did I say that out loud? Say it again. Eat proper. Get off the alcohol. Don't be smoking weed. Or anything else. God has made you perfect. Somebody say, thank God. I'm not a platypus. Has anyone ever seen a platypus? They're strange creatures. You think you have issues. These mammals is crazy. First of all, this is a mammal that lays eggs. Also... It has a beaver-like tail. It also has a duck bill. (laughs) And it has feet like an otter. And then to top it off, it has venom. It's a venomous mammal. In fact, the male version of the platypus, I was looking at the platypus, the platypus in its hind foot has this spike that comes out, and if it strikes you, it spills venom into you, and it's very, very painful. But you look at a platypus and you realize that God has a sense of humor. Because they're funny, but God made it and God made the platypus and he made it like no other animal on the planet. And although the platypus is different, it's perfect in its design because God made it. Now some of us, you might feel like you're a platypus. You might feel like you lay eggs. You might feel like you have a beaver tail and a duck bill, (laughs) but you are perfect just the way God made you. Now, I want to give you our key statement for the month. You ready for the key statement of the month? Because somebody was wondering, is he going to have one? Yeah, I'm going to have one, and yes, it's going to rhyme. I have a key statement. In this month of meeting me, myself, and I, it has come to my attention that God has drawn nigh to give me a fresh and supernatural supply of his divine revelation for my life. My past, my present, and my future all belong to him. He is the author of my life, and I know I'm not a whim. I'm a child of the living God, accepted and adored. I'm chosen, called, anointed. It's him I'm living for. Now I am moving forward in this amazing life as I continue to discover me, myself, and I. So let me, let, me, let me wrap this up. 
God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So here all of a sudden, God comes to Jeremiah and he declares to him his exceptional worth. He begins to speak to him and say, guess what? I made you and your worth started before you were born. There's nothing that you could have done to make me love you anymore. You cannot perform. You cannot act spiritual. You cannot prophesy your way into my heart. No, 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 no. I love you just the way that you are. And you are valuable to me. You are valuable Huh, to him before the world began. You were in Christ. I'm talking to somebody. You see, when we have an accurate view of, uh, an, an accurate, excuse me, an accurate view of ourselves comes from understanding God's view, understanding his perspective. And so Jeremiah is sitting there listening to God talk in this verse, and then you go to the next verses, and Jeremiah's like, starts downgrading himself. He starts speaking these words, well, I'm, I'm only a child. I cannot speak. I cannot declare things. And then God comes back. And I love God. God, God God's like not trying to coddle him. And 2024 is going to be a year where God's not going to coddle you. He will love you. He will comfort you. But 2024 is a year to grow up. Oh, I'll get to that next week. It's a year to grow up. And so God's not coddling him and saying, okay, Jeremiah, it's going to be all right. No, 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 no. Jeremiah's sitting there saying all this stuff that's outside of God's will and outside of who he's supposed to be. And so God says, do not say that I'm only a child. Do not talk like that anymore. Change your language. Change the way you're talking about yourself. Because I have plans for you that you don't even understand just yet. And so all of a sudden, ha, he brings Jeremiah into the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I got to speak a word of truth over somebody in this house because Jeremiah, if he was just flowing in his own strength, then yes, he would not live up to the calling that was in his life. But God came on the scene and says, guess what, Jeremiah? I know you have, don't have experience, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch your mouth. Because I'm going to anoint you. Guess what? God... <laughs> is going to place his hand on your life and change everything in 2024. There is the hand of God in Scripture. You read the book of Ezra, and it repeats over and over, the hand of the Lord was upon me, the hand of the Lord was upon me, the hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand of the Lord is coming upon you. Can I prophesy to somebody in this house? In this next year, and he's going to touch you in your mouth. You're going to, all of a sudden, when you get to, how many have ever been touched by God? How many have been anointed by God? When the anointing comes on your life, it makes the difference. When the anointing is released, it lifts burdens. It destroys yokes. When the anointing comes on your life, all of a sudden, you become what you could not be because you have an anointing in your life. So I don't need you to go around talking a certain way about yourself because I'm going to touch you with my hands, says the Spirit of the Lord, and I'm going to cause you to be released. I'm going to loosen your tongue. I'm going to loosen your anointing. You're not just going to sit around on the sidelines any longer, says the Lord. But you're stepping into the game. 2024 is a year for you to step into the game. You're not going to be, this is not a spectator sport. This is not a place that we're just going to sit there and watch the history go by. We're going to make history. We're going to change history. We're going to change Colleen. We're going to change Texas. We're going to change the United States of America. 
We're going to change North America and South America and the Western Hemisphere. And the earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I don't care what's going on in the world. Just like that, God can change everything. And when I read my Bible, I realize that God's raising up a glorious church in this hour who's going to occupy the mountains in the earth, the kingdoms in the earth, and we're going to bring the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And so, yes, there's warfare, and yes, the dragon is moving, and the beast is moving in the earth. But guess what? Also, God's people are about to rise up and be the church in this hour. And how's it going to happen? Do not say, do not put a limitation with your own words. I'm dealing with something here. On yourself any longer. Don't look to the past. Don't look at what you don't have. Don't look at what has not happened, says the Lord. But I'm causing you to step into a whole new place because my hand is coming upon you. And I'm going to touch you, Jeremiah, and everything is going to change. You know what the name Jeremiah means? It means Jehovah is rising. God is looking hmm, for a company of people. His eyes are going to and fro throughout the earth. And he's looking for a people of whom he can show himself strong. Woo! He's looking for a Jeremiah company that he can rise through. Because like Malachi said, the son of righteousness is going to rise with healing in his ways. There's something powerful that takes place because you need to hear something today. You are valuable, essential, and crucial to what God is doing in this time. Let me give you one more example. There was a man, he went to Paris, and he bought a necklace. And when he came back to the United States, as he was going through the border, he had to pay a very high duty for this necklace. He just bought a trinket shop. And so he was curious now, what is this necklace? And so he went to a jeweler, and the jeweler said, I will give you $25,000 for this necklace. This man thought, wait a second. I'm not going to get fooled by this. And so he went to another jewelry appraiser, and the appraiser pulled out the diamond loop. The diamond loop is God's perspective. Can I speak to somebody up in here? And he pulled out the loop, and he looked at the back of the necklace. And when he saw it, he said, this thing is invaluable. And the man said, why, why, why? Why is it so much? I just bought it for like 10 bucks in a trinket shop. And he said, because the inscription on the back of this necklace says, from Napoleon Bonaparte to Josephine. The inscription on the jewelry gave it value. The inscription of God on your heart, in your genes, in your DNA, in your spirit gives you value. The hand of the Lord that's on your life gives you value. You see, God wants to encounter you. Why is he talking about encounter yourself? This is weird. Is he humanistic? No, I'm realistic. Because I don't want you to be another statistic. Keep rhyming. So let's not get sadistic. Okay. God wants to encounter you. James had that revelation in chapter 4 and verse 8. He said, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. 
Woo! The sons of Korah had the revelation in Psalm 46. Deep calls unto deep. My deep, which is very shallow, is a drop in the bucket to the ocean of God's deep. My deep is calling unto his deep. God wants to encounter you. 2024 is a year of divine encounters. Why does God come and meet with man? Because he wants to encounter you. He wants to encounter you. He wants to heal you, restore you, sanctify you, justify you, deliver you, and set you free. When my perspective is lined up with whose I am, whoo, then all of a sudden I have a directive for who I am. Who are you? I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. There's something powerful happening in this room right now. God's rearranging some things in your heart. He's moving some stuff out of the way right now. Some old things, some old perspectives, some old limitations are being broken now. There it is, in Jesus' name. I told you, faith comes by the hearing of the word of the Lord. And God's moving things around. By the time this month is over, you're going to walk different. You're going to talk different. You're going to live different. You're going to decide different. Because some of you are ready for an upgrade. You've been living, what, what Chuck Swindoll would say, on a level that's mediocre. And we got to live above that level. We got to move and realize can I speak to somebody? That you're the head and you're not the tail. You're above only and you're not beneath. I am a child of God. 